from the director of Frozen. No, not that one. The better one comes a throwback horror film to the days when slashers were filled with blood, revenge, and fumes. Join Joe Blow Horror as we take you down to the bayou with Adam Green's Hatchet. Welcome to Horror Party Movies, friends, where we take our favorite horror films, good or bad, and make a fun little game out of it. I'm Mike Conway, and today we're going to break down all the gory bits of Adam Green's Hatchet, released in 2006. Hatchet follows Ben, a recently dumped 20-something who has taken to a Mardi Gras celebration with his buddies to get over his ex. When Ben decides there's just too much nudity to be had, he and his friend Marcus ditch the group to find a haunted boat tour. However, when their boat gets stranded, they find themselves being hunted by Victor Crowley, a deformed and vengeful ghost. As the group tries to survive the night, they face gruesome and supernatural challenges, with Victor Crowley relentlessly pursuing them. So what type of party is this movie? Well, according to this scale, this movie promises some old school slasher fun. And as always, I'm going to show you how to make the drink to tie along with the movie, right after these credits. <laughs> As with any game, there are basic rules you must follow. For today's game, take a drink when there's a horror cameo, when Ben talks about his ex, when an alligator is shown, when you hear the name Victor Crowley, every time you hear the tour guy change his accent, when there is nudity, and finally with any kill. If alcohol isn't your bag, there are plenty of other things to choose from. Cannabis, if legal in your state, Delta 8, 9, 10, or whatever the hell number they're at now. Caffeine, hot sauce, anything. Just know your tolerance. This is supposed to be fun. We don't want you to send you to the hospital. Basically, don't be a dumbass. Here, read this disclaimer if that helps. So with that list, we're going to travel all the way back to 2006. The year that not only saw Justin Timberlake bring Sexy back, but the year that we also saw Adam Green bring the slasher back and break down exactly why this movie is a party movie. And it all starts at the beginning. Right at the jump, we are introduced to a father and son on a boat in the swamp. And hey look, a gator! It may be dead, but drink up anyway. And you may as well keep that glass to your lips because another one pops up right about here. While the pair are out hunting these bad boys, the son, Ainsley, makes it clear he doesn't want to be there by taking a piss in the swamp. This in turn pisses off the gator who lunges at Ainsley and nearly ruins his weekend. Still not finished, he hops off the boat into the woods to finish what is apparently the piss of the century. When he returns, he sees his father torn open. While he assumes it was a gator, the POV shot suggests something otherwise and chases Ainsley down. The unseen assailant then proceeds to completely rip the guy apart until the swamp becomes quiet. The cold open ends with the opening credits with Marilyn Manson's This Is The New Shit very fittingly blasting through our speakers. The opening oozes with that old school slasher formula that we've been missing for quite a long time. Characters who bicker at each other? Check. Fake out jump scares? Check. Killer's POV? Check. Awesome kills? Double check. From the beginning, Adam Green shows us how passionate he is about slasher movies by introducing us to two characters played by actors who are no strangers to horror. If you ever wonder what happened to Joshua Leonard when he got his teeth removed in Blair Witch Project, well, here he is. And apparently still missing his teeth. The dad really needs no introduction as this absolute legend has been responsible for giving us nightmares all through our childhoods with Freddy Krueger. And these two aren't the only horror veterans to show up, but more on that in a bit. From there, we are thrown right in the middle of Mardi Gras, filled with partying and, by my count, 12 sets of boobs, which I can't show here, but take my word for it. Oh, oh right here, right here, right here, right here. Look at that. Oh, look at those boobs right there. <laughs> Sorry, 13. Haven't you seen enough boobs? Ben is taken to the party of all parties by his group of friends, one of whom is played by director Adam Green, to get over his ex-girlfriend, when in reality, he would rather be home, probably wanting to create the newest hit video game. 
He ditches the group and brings his friend Marcus with him. I'm just supposed to smile, stay out of the conversation. Ben has been told of an awesome haunted boat tour and once he found the place, he was greeted by yet another horror event. Candy man himself, Tony Todd. He tells the boys he doesn't do boat tours anymore since he was sued and directs them to someone else who will do it at Marie Laveau's House of Voodoo, led by tour guide Sean, who has an accent just as bad as those in True Blood. Why I do the only haunted swamp tour? On the boat tour, we are introduced to the characters we will spend the majority of our time with until they get axed, that is. There's our Girls Gone Wild knockoff trio, Jenna, Misty, and Murray brother, Doug Shapiro. While technically not horror, folks who grew up in the 90s may recognize Mercedes McNabb's Misty from both Adam's Family flicks. Rounding off the cast are elderly couple Jim and Shannon, and our obvious final girl, Mary Beth. Once they get off the boat, everyone quickly learns Sean may not be the tour guide he says he is and crashes the boat. They are forced to get off and head into the woods to look for help. Look, I did the one tour last night that I did this one here tonight, all right? Mary Beth reveals she is only on the tour to look for her missing father and brother, the ones killed in the opening, and tells the legend of Victor Crowley. Victor was a deformed boy who was kept hidden by his father, played by fan favorite Jason actor Kane Hodder. One night, some kids decide to scare Victor by throwing fireworks into his home, which sets it on fire. Trying to free his son, the dad takes the hatchet and breaks the door down. However, the blade busts through the door and kills Victor. As it turns out, they are in front of the Crowley house, and this is where a good slasher becomes great. Throughout the remaining back half of the film, the cast gets taken out by Victor Crowley in the gnarliest of ways until Ben and Mary Beth remain. The pair end up impaling Victor and escape to her dad's boat, feeling victorious. But naturally, the movie ends with one last scare as Victor emerges from the swamp. I mean, pretty simple plot, right? So what separates this film from the slew of other 2000 slasher films that disappear to the floor of your local Dollar Tree? Let's start with Victor Crowley. If there's one thing the 80s gave us, it's a great iconic slasher villain. Freddy, Jason, Chucky, Pinhead, they're the ones who survived and who we still talk about to this day. The 90s gave birth to Ghostface and sure, I'll throw in Leprechaun in the mix, but nothing much else. I can hear people screaming Urban Legend and The Fisherman from I Know What You Did Last Summer, but really, do you see anyone dressed up like them for Halloween? What the 2000s was sorely lacking was a return to the slasher feel of the 80s with a killer who would stand out amongst the rest who tried. I'm looking at you, Cupid from Valentine. And that's what we got with Victor Crowley. With him, we got a rich enough backstory, terrific makeup with no mask needed, insane kills, and no mystery about who the killer is. He's just a good old fashioned killing machine who has three sequels of his own. While many of you will say he's the best Jason, Kane Hodder is Victor Crowley all the way. Adam Green had a rule when making this film and that was no CGI. This is all practical effects, baby. If we don't kill him, he'll kill us all. And if you folks are playing at home, let's get into them right now to find out why each and every single one of them kicks so much ass. After the first two from the opening, we get our first kill 45 minutes in, along with the reveal of an adult victor. After old man Jim gets bitten by a gator, he and his wife head to the house to look for help. Suddenly, Victor emerges from the shadows of the entrance and chases down Jim. No walking for this hulking figure as he chops into Jim. Shit! It is brutal the way he just constantly brings that axe down, and there's absolutely no way he can make a jump to conclusions mad after this one. But it's not as brutal as what happens to his wife. While trying to run away, Victor catches up with her and unhinges her face like an oyster. Damn! And even though you know the kill is about to happen with the well-paced tension and musical cues, it's unfortunate that the first group to go are the sweet old folks. And next up on the chopping block, five minutes later, is the sleazy Joe Francis stand-in, Doug Shapiro, whose real name is Samuel Barry. After fleeing from the group to only help himself, it's natural he'll be next on the list. And really, I feel this slimy bastard does the most cardio of the entire group. After hiding in the bush, Doug feels the coast is clear and runs immediately into Victor, who points his head in the direction he should have been running. Shit! Okay, so it's been a good while since I've seen this movie and this part legit scared the shit out of me. So if you want to go in fresh and you haven't seen this movie in a while, jump this video up about 30 seconds and then come back. Since Doug felt he should come first, that only means his Bayou Beavers are soon after him. While Ben and Mary Beth separate, they leave Marcus, Sean, Misty, and Jenna behind. 
A rustling suddenly appears in a bush behind Jenna. All four begin to debate who should check out the noise, which is the one thing you shouldn't do in these flicks. Marcus gets nominated to check it out, of course, which turns out to be a cute little misdirection. And then this happens. Oh, man, it's just a, st a shit your pants jump scare. Seriously, my voice hit an octave I hadn't been able to hit since I was a child. Crowley then takes a belt sender and shaves down this bayou beaver and then chops off the head of Sean with a shovel. Damn, shit. While it may not be the best kill in the film, it is definitely the best scene in the movie. What makes this scene rock so fucking hard is a nice blend of comedy, misdirection, and pure terror in a long take. The lack of music cues to make us jump makes it work even more and reminds me of a similar scene in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And once they get away and you think that you have time to breathe, this happens just two minutes later. <laughs> Shit, man. All right, now you can breathe a minute. Unfortunately, Misty's kill is off screen and painfully brings me to the final kill. Dion Richmond's Marcus is by far my favorite character in the movie. Not only is he the comic relief, but he's also the smartest character who should have survived. So let's get into it. With the mere seven minutes left of the film, one would think everyone makes it out alive with the burning of Victor Crowley. They all find a way to escape to freedom when he jumps out of fucking nowhere. I mean, Jesus, just look how badass he looks here. He catches up with Marcus and gives him the Jax from Mortal Kombat treatment. Flawless victory, fatality. And if that wasn't enough, in an homage to Kane Hodder's famous kill from Friday the 13th The New Blood, he takes Marcus's body and slams it on the tombstone. That is whack! We do get one more Friday the 13th reverence with a sweet finale music as the pair of survivors float down the swamp and Crowley blasts out the water. However, even though Ben looks dead as shit here, we end up seeing his fate in Hatchet 3. As for Mary Beth, well, Victor Crowley scares the poor girl so badly that she ends up changing into a better actress for the next one. And that's it! If you folks are playing at home and want to use my rules, here's the horror movie party tally. We came down here to have a good time. You have four horror cameos, four mentions of Ben's ex, four gator sightings, 15 mentions of Victor Crowley, three accent changes from Sean, 15 breasts, and nine kills from Victor Crowley. Rip off! Hatchet was released in 2006 where it had a festival run and then was later released in 2007 on DVD, which is when I picked it up. What was your favorite kill in the movie and what would you like to see us cover next? Let us know in the comments and we will see you on the next one.